everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today we're talking blotting powders, touch-up powders, however you wanna to refer to them. I am on the go a lot. I'm out and about and I get that oily T-zone. It's a struggle. I'm gonna show you how I blot and touch up my skin with translucent powder while I'm on the go. I'm also going to show you my top blotting powders that I really enjoy. So if you struggle with oily combination skin, if you get shiny through your T-zone, you will probably be interested in this video. I've been promising you a blotting and finishing powder video, but I decided to separate the two because it just made more sense to me because they're really two totally separate issues. If you haven't seen my recent best setting powders video, I'm gonna link that down below so you can watch that when you're finished with this. I decided to film this today because I walked in the door and realized I was getting shiny. So this was a great day to film this. So I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit and just take you through the process of what I normally do when I might be in my car or in a bathroom somewhere. I'm not usually in my house when I'm worried about my oily T-zone. So I'm not gonna be using tools that are easily accessible to me on a daily basis when I'm here at my vanity. I don't bring my beauty blender with me. And that was something I saw in some of the blotting videos <laughs> that I looked up just to see what was out there. I see a lot of people taking their beauty blender and dabbing it on their face, which is great if that works for you, if you pack your beauty blender with you or if you are at home. I'm just usually not home when I have this issue and I don't take it with me. So let's zoom in and get started and I'll show you what I do. I am not very particular when it comes to blotting sheets. I usually do use blotting sheets because they're easy and compact to keep in your purse. So I have the Kleenex Facial Tissue, I think, brand here. And this one is a brand, I think I got them from Ulta, Natural 24-7 blotting tissues. I think these are the aloe kind. Zon Cosmetics is the brand that's on this. I've gotten the Ulta brand. I've gotten some from Sephora. Um, I've gotten some from Elf, I think, or NYX. I don't know, but I don't really care. I just want them to absorb oil and take away the shine. I use tissues sometimes if I have to. Starbucks napkins are great. Toilet seat covers, if you take them out, they're kind of the same material. They work too. So whatever works to absorb the shine. And I take it and just press very, very gently on the skin. And I'm sure this is probably blotting 101, very easy for a lot of you. I'm not going into completely redoing your makeup <laughs> if you need to redo everything today. Obviously, if something comes off while you're doing this, if you see, okay, you remove all of your blush or all of your foundation, I would touch that up for sure. But today we're just talking about blotting. I find that because I'm so particular about my makeup that I apply and try and recommend to you guys, I really don't have to reapply hardly anything, if ever, while I'm out during the day except for lipstick. So that took off some oil, you can see there. I'm gonna take the edges of this and just see if I can get a little bit more off. But you can see that really did take down that shine that I had going on my face. And I just try and get the perimeters of the face too. And you don't want to press too hard because then you'll have a greater chance of removing your makeup. So I usually do take a second or third sheet just for extra insurance to make sure that I absorbed all of the excess oil. And you know, you can never really get it all, but it's just kind of extra insurance. So I got a little bit more on there. Another option is using something like this Blotterazzi by Beauty Blender. You can actually take this, and I probably should have showed you this on one side of my face. I'd actually intended on doing that. This works too if you don't want to use papers, but you can just take this, pop it back in, you can reuse this. You just need to wash this, but this is another option if you don't want to use blotting sheets. Okay, so let's get started with the powders. I have a couple of drugstore options in here and I have three that I probably reach for more than the others. I don't know why, I guess I just feel like they work a little bit better, but they all work pretty well, so it's really, just your preference if you try these. The two that I, I keep in my stash, but I haven't really reached for them in a long time, but they are still really good. I guess you're gonna see some of my quirks in this video. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. This is the Laura Mercier Matte Translucent. This one, it almost has kind of a green tinge to it because it's matte. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's green because it's matte. I think this matte version just has a green tinge to it. The sponge I have in here doesn't match. The sponge actually goes to the next powder that I'm gonna show you. My sponges always get mixed up 
because I'll wash the ones that are in here and I'll replace them with a different sponge. I do prefer applying my touch up powder, my blot powder with a sponge or a puff kind of thing rather than a brush because I feel like it presses it into the skin a little more firmly than a brush does. Very similarly to if you're applying a setting powder, if you dust it on with a brush, it kind of sits on the surface of the skin versus pressing it in with a puff or a beauty blender. So it's just the way I feel about it. It also looks pretty natural if you just really get it in the skin. So this is the Laura Mercier Matte Translucent. It works really, really well. I probably should throw this out because it's probably old. I just can't bring myself to. It's almost like I feel like I'm gonna run out of blotting powder when I'm not. There's no way I could run out, but I keep it for a backup for some reason. Now I'm gonna show you the one that I use most consistently after the Laura Mercier, before I started my channel. Actually, this is what I was using most consistently when I started my channel, before I started messing around with other powders and trying out things all the time. This is the Shiseido Translucent Pressed Powder. That's all it's called. The sponge I have in here is to, I think, the number seven pressed powder, not the loose powder. I'm not sure. I'm intermingling all of my sponges with my powders. So I have some left in here too. I probably need to get rid of this, but I keep holding on to it thinking I'm gonna stick it back in my purse and then I'm not. But this is also a great powder. It looks very natural on the skin, but it does seem to absorb and control the oil for a long time. I feel like I'm gonna be kind of repetitive with these powders because they are all translucent. They do all mattify the skin. They don't appear to be ghostly white or anything like that. They just look nice and natural, yet they do help keep shine away for a long time. I could swatch them on my hand, but they're translucent, so there's really no point in me swatching them. I'm just gonna show you what they look like. The next one that I keep on hand as a setting powder as well as a touch-up blotting powder is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless number 100 translucent. I've talked about this powder pretty recently actually. I love this powder. I think it's great and it's economical. It's not quite as finely milled as these two that I already talked about, but it works well and it's especially great for the price point. What I don't like I'm holding it like I'm covering up a mirror. That is what I don't like about this powder. I like to be able to open a compact and look in a mirror, especially if I'm on the go. You have to open the compact and then open it again and then take the sponge out, get your powder, then flip it up again and then powder yourself to look in the mirror. It's kind of cumbersome the way they do this packaging. I really, really dislike the packaging of this but the powder is really nice. The next one is also drugstore. I also hate this packaging and I have also talked about this before on my channel. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned the Shiseido and the Laura Mercier on my channel before. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte. It does not come with the sponge in the top. It doesn't come with anything actually. So you do have to either just slap a sponge in it or bring a brush with you. I have applied it with both and it works just fine. It's really nice. Some people set their makeup with this and I think it does set the face nicely. It's terrible under the eyes because it's so drying, but um, I'm in shade 001 Transparent. This looks to be the most beige of the group, I do believe, but it's still translucent. It doesn't come off beige on the skin. It doesn't change the color of your makeup or anything like that. It does mattify you really well and it just kind of blurs the pores really nicely. And I feel like all of these kind of do that. Okay, I have another powder that I almost forgot about. I had it set aside for a different video for another reason. It may or may not already be up. If it is, I'll have it on the screen or down below or something. It is the only loose powder in this video. I really like a pressed powder for the convenience. I don't like to have a loose powder because they spill, they're messy, they're bulky, that kind of thing. This is the exception. This is the Benefit Professional Agent Zero Shine. This is a super underrated product. Not enough people talk about it, but the people that do talk about it, that do know about it, really, really love it. And the reason why is because it works really well. It's got a little sifter right here. It locks closed and you twist it open and you just tap a little into the cap like so. You can see that there. And then the brush is this end right here. You take it out, you can wash it, clean it, and you just swirl your brush into the cap like so, and then you dust it on. And it really, really is 
effective and it works well at blotting and keeping you shine free for a long period of time. I really, really like this powder a lot. And you know, you only put a little bit in the cap at a time. There's never any excess or anything like that. Lock it back, close it tight, and you're good to go. It's so easy, it's so convenient. I was actually really surprised at how much I like this product and the packaging is super cute too. My last two, which are probably, my, I feel like they're my top two picks actually. So I guess if I'm going in any kind of an order, I would just have a top two and then all the rest. So this is the MAC Blot Powder in shade medium. Outside looks like this, typical MAC packaging. This does have a tint to it, which is really different for me, but it's so sheer. I find it doesn't really make a difference to anything. Um, I mean, I will swatch this just so you can see how sheer it is. I feel like it's just kind of a, a medium translucent shade. So yeah, you can kind of see that. I mean, that is super, super sheer. It's just a translucent shade. It does come with a puff that sits in the top. It's called blot powder. It is meant to mattify and to blot your shine. It works really, really well. I do enjoy this. I do, however, feel like if I wear this for more than maybe four or five days at a time, I feel like I do start to get some little clogged areas. So I love this when I have a really long day or a couple of long days in a row or a really long evening because it works really, really, really well, but I can't wear it for an extended period of time in a row. I hope that makes sense. I know a lot of you really like this powder, but this is why it's not my number one pick because I can't just throw it in my purse and forget about it because I just, I can't continue to wear it for days on end. My favorite blotting powder, touch up powder of the moment is the Fenty Invisimat blotting powder. This is what has been living in my purse lately. It's just so good. It looks like it's gonna make you ghostly white because it is completely white but it looks really natural on the skin. A lot of people set their makeup with this. I don't just because I leave it in my purse and I step usually with loose powder. Sometimes I set with pressed powder, but I mean, all I do really is just take a little bit on my puff. I kind of blot it into the powder and then I blot it on my face. I don't like to swipe my puff across my face. I like to dab it or blot it across my face because if you swipe powder across your face, it can move your makeup. So I always use blotting motions when I am blotting my face, just makes sense. And it just looks nice and natural and it presses it into the skin. So it is probably gonna keep you matter longer or shine free for a longer period of time. And that's all I do. That's it, it's very easy, nothing to it. Just make sure you press it in. You don't wanna use setting spray or anything like that when you're blotting your makeup during the day because you don't wanna lock the excess oils that have already come through in even further. Even though you've blotted away the oils, you still do have some that are in your skin that occur naturally anyway, and you just don't wanna set those in even more. So as long as you blotted your oils away with something before you powder, you should be good to go. That's all I do, guys. It's pretty easy, pretty simple, and those are my favorite tools and powders. And now you guys know, what are yours? Let me know what you use during the day to combat the shine. I love getting your suggestions. Leave them down below for me. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.